One of the ways that you can improve security with your GraphQL application is to adopt something called persisted queries. This allows you to only run queries from your front end that are persisted on the back end. This means you can send a hash instead of a query to your back end, and if that hash matches what you've already stored, well, it will look up, fetch that query, and then it will execute that on the server without your front end having access to be able to run and execute any query that it likes. We won't go into detail on the exact implementation in this video on how we would generate these queries or how we would execute them on the server, but instead we'll just look at the concept. In another video, we'll learn all about how to implement this on the front end and on the server, as well as generating all of these queries in our store and assigning hashes for each of these queries at the build step. Here we have a very simple object where the key is of a hash and then the actual value for this is of a GraphQL query. So if we execute a GraphQL query against our server, and here we'll just pass a empty query, and we'll see here without passing anything in our hash that there is no persisted query found. But instead, if we take this hash here and we update the query to include this hash string, and we execute that, you'll see we get a response from our GraphQL server. This GraphQL query here doesn't use any GraphQL variables but we can use the same technique with persisted queries using GraphQL variables. Here we have a query where we need to pass in the ID of a cart that we want to fetch. So if we take this hash and we now update our GraphQL request to use that same hash here, you'll notice that we aren't passing any GraphQL queries in our request. Here when we make the request, we'll get the same error as we normally would when we make a regular GraphQL query without persisted queries that we have some missing GraphQL variables. Now inside of our request, let's also pass some GraphQL variables. So here we'll call the key variables and then we can pass a regular object. And here we'll pass the ID and then we'll pass the value WTF. Now when we execute this query, you'll see that we get the response back from our server because we passed that all important ID GraphQL variable along with the hash for our GraphQL query. This technique of using persisted queries also works with GraphQL mutations. Now it depends whether you're using Apollo clients, Urkel or Relay, some of the implementations can vary and we'll look at that in a different video. Hopefully this video has given you an idea on how you can improve security with your GraphQL server and how you can reduce the overall payloads that are made from your front end to your back end.